All right, guys, we are live and welcome to another episode of the Bet Out of Debt show. So give me a second, guys, because we're about to get into a very interesting topic. I'm going to have to um, do a spin here because the market this week, last week, and the previous week has been crazy. So um, welcome to the show. We have Patrick, our accountant from a prestigious accounting firm in Los Angeles. And we have our regular contributor, our crypto king, Mr. Tremaine Palms. Welcome today to the show. Thank you so much. What a joy to be back. Yes, yes. So guys, let's start out with, based on the week that we had, Let's start out with for our beginner and new investors. And I know we go into this um, option trading and all of that stuff. It's very complicated, but the fundamental underlining asset that we're really using is stock picking. And so for the average investor, you really have to get stock picking down directionally. And so A lot of people are not readers per se. They're more visual from the television show, a TV perspective. So I wanted to go over our favorite TV shows for a beginner investor to watch, to learn the stock picking stock market game. I have my favorite pick. I would like for you guys to come in on it. And then I would like to go individually to each one of you to get your favorite TV show for stop picking. All right. And we're limiting it to TV shows. Um, and, and it could be internet based or whatever, but it has to be a TV show. So for me, my favorite TV show is I'm, Matter of fact, I will hold mine. Let's go to Patrick. (laughs) I've been doing a lot of talking. Patrick, what is your favorite TV show for a beginner investing for stock picking? All right. Thanks, Troy. It's good to be back on the show. So my favorite TV show for stock picking is uh, Squawk Box. Now, on CNBC. Squawk Box is on usually between, I think, about 3.30 in the morning to about 6.30 in the morning, Pacific Standard Time. So just before the market opens, they bring in a lot of resident experts, and they choose the overall market sentiment, how current events play into the various um, stock markets and how they impact the stocks themselves. They bring on a lot of the company representatives, they'll talk about their earnings or guidances, uh, what they plan to do for the future, and they do it in layman terms. And it gives you a good gauge as to how the market may um, end up performing for the rest of the day. Layman terms for you. I I find Squawk Box a little technical. I think it's good, but I find it a little technical. But go ahead, Patrick. Sorry. Well, well, they have like some of the really good commentators like um, Becky Quick will interview Warren Buffett, who is a, a legendary stock picker. And he talks about things. He's not a very technical guy. And he'll kind of talk about the what and the why behind the stock picks okay all right gotcha. and, go ahead sorry and, and joe kernan who uh will talk about you know just the general market and he'll also bring in uh people like uh muhammad el arid who's like a a a very intelligent and a well-experienced fund manager gotcha Gotcha. All right. Um, yeah. Squat box. <laughs> and, and again, this I, is I just watch before. Squat box. Squat box. Come on. I mean, here in Seattle, you know, 
Pacific time. It comes on from 3 a.m., but Squad Boss is like 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. Yes, it is. So you have to be an early bird to watch it. Great information. Um, I'll leave it at that. But you're a super intelligent guy. Uh, Palms, your pick for yes. best TV show uh, for Thank a beginner. You. Now, beginner, we're talking beginner. For a beginner, my choice, drum roll, is TD Ameritrade. TD Ameritrade. TD Ameritrade Live. Yes. How, TD Ameritrade how, Live. How, how does one watch TD Ameritrade Live? I've never seen that TV station. So, can you explain to the audience? Yes. Uh, for those who, uh, you know, have a fire stick, that would be uh, one way to uh, to get in. That's where I watch it. Um, and uh, it's live through it. So I'm able to, uh, the first thing I do when I get up in the morning, probably around 5 or 5.30, uh, I start going through my progression of stocks. I'm game planning on what I want to do for the day. And uh, so I go to TD Ameritrade. Uh, and I start uh, tuning in to find out, you know, what the projections look like for the day, um, you know, what particular stocks may be moving um, and uh, just trying to get a gauge for what the market is going to do and what opportunities we'll be able to uh, that we can utilize to take advantage of these uh, what we called uh, downturns over the last three weeks. Uh, how we can dollar cost average down into some stocks that we really love and have conviction and the thesis over. Uh, and then perhaps maybe there's some stocks that we haven't considered. Uh, just over the last week, real quickly, uh, we've watched Tesla go from about 950, uh, drop below 600 the other day. That was really, really exciting to see. Uh, so, man, there is a ton of opportunity in the market right now. So I would encourage those of you who are not tuned in, uh, if you can, go into one of these platforms that all three of us have mentioned today. It will do you well. I still have one. I'm holding mine. I, I haven't provided mine yet. But what, what I did not hear, Mr. Palms, was why would you recommend the TD Ameritrade live feed um, at, for a new investor for stock picking? I did not hear the particulars of specifically for a new investor? Well, I don't think it's, it's as technical. You know, I, I think it's, it's, uh, it's not as technical. And then there's a wide variation of different um, sectors that they deal with. So for a new investor, <clears throat> excuse me, who may just want to be involved in tech, uh, you know, uh, maybe in industrials, but they're going to cover a wide range of, uh, of hot stocks and uh, uh, any stocks, if you will. So that, that really gives a new investor an opportunity to be able to see a broad uh, spectrum of, of opportunity as opposed to just sort of focused in on just the, the hot sector at the time. So um, I think that would serve well for a new investor. Yeah, yeah, I get that. And, and, and that's the key. I really like those TV shows that go out on a limb and say, these are the picks. I'm picking these, and this is why. You can listen to some of those TV shows or watch them, and they give you this uh, out, if you will. They'll say, we feel this way. This could go this way. Yeah. But I really like those shows that say, yeah, this is the pick, and I have conviction this is the pick, and this is why. And I think those are the best TV shows for investors. But let me go to my favorite TV show <laughs> for beginner investors. And I think um, I think mine is better than the two of yours. Um, <laughs> my favorite for a beginner is CNBC Mad Money with Jim Cramer. I think there is no better TV show for a brand new stock picker investor that mad money. And I'll tell you why. Jim not only have, you know, used to be a hedge fund manager and, and, and just legendary on, on the street, Wall Street, but he really breaks it down for a brand new investor. He picks the stocks. 
He brings on the CEOs daily to tell you why you should buy their particular company and their stocks. He then, he then at least maybe once a month or once every month, other month, do a like an educational segment, like when he goes on vacation, to show you some of the fundamentals of how to pick stocks, the emotional psychology behind it. And then lastly, what Jim Cramer does is give you the confidence when the market turns crazy. He really, he's really a good advocate for us, the retail investor. So I look at Squawk Box. I do not look at the TD thing. So I'm, I, I will have to look into that. But I would like your feedback on my Mad Money Best TV show for the new investor. I would agree that Jim Cramer is um, a, a, a good one for, a, a, a good guru for um brand new investors. He also speaks on uh, Squawk Box, by the way. And he will, he just kind of marries real life, the, you know, what's happening in the economy and how, again, how to pick stocks and how the earnings impact the, um, the overall price and volume of a particular <laughs> stock or the stock market as a whole. So I'm with you on that one. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Palms, do you watch? CNBC Mad Money? Absolutely. 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 No Man. doubt about it. I would, you're a new I investor disagree. and, and you're trying to get in the game and you're not watching Mad Money? Man, you're just really missing out. But go ahead, Palms. I interrupted you. Well, no, I, I you know, uh, Troy mentioned, you know, there's there's a lot of nuggets in, in the show, man, that you can you can gain from. Uh, Jim oftentimes will put up a, a, a screen and they'll just show you flat out uh, the top five stocks, you know, um, and he will go through them by detail and he'll tell you why he has conviction in a thesis with it. So uh, I recall, uh, I think it was at the, the last quarter of 2020 uh, and it's still ringing in my, in my, in my head as I'm speaking. And uh, he was talking about Roku. He was talking about, um, who else did he have on the list? Uh, uh, well, there were several names on the list, but Roku was the one that really stood out to me. Uh, and Roku's actually a big, big player, you know, uh, you know, in one of the stocks that he talked about. But he does this routinely. Anybody that knows uh, stocks knows that Jim Cramer is a name to be a force to be reckoned with. He gives a recommendation. Um, uh, it's pretty good. You might want to take heed to that. So I have no disagreement whatsoever. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Highly recommend it. I know on the West Coast, it's from three p.m. to four p.m. It's only a one-hour show, so one could do the time differential based on where you live. All righty. So, Patrick, I know you wanted to share something with us today. I know you wanted to share some technicals on the VITS. Yes. Now, what is the VITS? And then let's see what you have to share with our audience. And if you like what you heard so far, um, give us a like. Let us know that this is helpful and that you find this, in, this information useful. So, um, Patrick, let's go into your description of the VITS and what you have to share with our audience today. Yeah, let me share my screen first. So the VIX is an index that gauges fear like, and, and volatility. So usually when the markets are calm, the VIX is at a very, very low point as you see here, um, right, right along the base here. And, uh, as, and then this is in comparison to the S&P 500. Um, in this case, this is actually the the the, the spy ETF which follows the S and P. And as the VIX becomes lower and lower and lower and bases out, the that means investors are fairly confident about the market. They're not panicking for as you as you will. 
and the market keeps going higher as the VIX keeps going lower. However, once there's like, I guess a black swan event to trigger fear in the market and induce a lot of panic selling, here you'll see the VIX spike super, super, super high. And when you have these super spikes, that generally means that there's all kinds of fear. Like people are just dumping good stocks as well as bad stocks. And the, uh, the market hits a relative low. I found that in the, uh, in the past that one, as the VIX super spikes and the market hits a relative low, these are good buying points right here. Like I said, this pink line is the S&P 500 ETF, follows the, follows the S&P, which is the 500 top stocks on the US markets. And here the VIX is way, way high. Then as you see the VIX come down, the, the market keeps going higher and higher and higher until you get another super spike. Um, and that will also represent a good op buying opportunity as, as it is right here, because again, investors are pretty much throwing out the baby with the bathwater. So if you see the VIX, I mean, these are on percentage points uh, relative to itself, but the VIX will is anywhere from, I think, zero to 80. Anything above 20 is considered, you know, fairly elevated, you know, a little bit concerned uh, investors or investors are kind of concerned. Anything above 30 and investors tend to be very, very bearish. I find that the VIX serves as a contrarian indicator. Again, super high uh, VIX bites represents strong buying opportunities right here again. You see how this kind of um, has a little bit of a drop here and the VIX goes up. Again, right here, the VIX is high, the market's relatively low. And that's why I like to follow the VIX. Let me, let me ask you a couple of questions. And Mr. Palms, you can jump in here as well. Um, when we're talking about one thing, you mentioned a black swan. Our viewing audience may not be familiar with that term. Um, we are. So you may want to share what a black swan is. And then let me ask the second question after you answer that. Or maybe I'll ask the question and you can just go into it. My, my second question would be, um, where are we in relations to today with the VITS? And what real point are you trying to make in relationship to today's VITS reading on this chart um, for picking? So those, those are the two comments or questions I had. Okay, certainly. And those are good questions. The, a black swan event is some unforeseen tragic or some some event that will adversely affect the market, such as when way back in March of 2020, when the world economy was shutting down because of the COVID-19 uh, precautions. That's when the market just really slid down and down and down and down. And that caused a lot of uh, panic selling. Now, the VIX in today's volatility, uh, unfortunately, I mean, it has gone up and the market has come down, but the market has come down from an all time high right here. And there's really not too much fear in the market. I mean, sure, there's a lot of volatility, but I would feel more comfortable if the VIX were up here or up here as this market is coming down. So, and essence, I think because the VIX is not as high as some of these other super spikes, that the market may have uh, more room to fall. Exactly. And that's the point. That was the point. Because the VIX, there's not enough fear in the market. Mm -hmm. And the market has been falling. 
that is an indicator that the market could continue to fall because there's not enough fear. The VIX is too low. When the market is falling, you want that VIX to spike up because fear will drive an indicator that we are bottoming. We're at the bottom of the market. And, so go ahead, Patrick. And just to conclude, and the reason why you have some volatility, you know, it, significant volatility right now is that the the interest rates are moving higher in anticipation that the economy is going to be strong. So any strong economic indicators that um, come out from various sources may spook the market because people are feeling more confident. And as people feel more confident, they're not going to be a scare unless you have something really, 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 really extreme to hit the market. And even though the volatility has been significant the last few, um, maybe a couple of weeks, probably not enough because people are feeling confident about their economy. Yeah, the market is going to go down based on events, but we will see because none of us know the market is super unpredictable. Mm -hmm. Mr. Palms, I wanted to roll back over to you. And I, you know, you are our crypto king. I wanted to kind of roll into the crypto space. I know you wanted to share some security measures as related to crypto. So can you share that with the audience, please? Absolutely. Absolutely. Let me um, uh, share my screen here really quick. Um, Patrick, you're still sharing, so we need to. I'm, I'm sorry. Share. I'm sorry. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, I don't want to share. What I'm going to do is share this. Can we see that? Yeah, yes. we can see that. Yeah. Okay. So uh, what I have in my hand is what they call a digital wallet. Uh, for those of you who are just entering into the crypto space, Again, this is a digital wallet. It is a ledger, L-E-D-G-E-R. For those of you who want to pick one of these up, Nano, N-A-N-O-X. And let me tell you quickly the significance of a digital wallet. Typically, uh, in one of our previous shows, and you can go back and please take a look at the video in which uh, we did a segment on the specific wallets that uh, that I had recommended that have served you well. But let me share this. A ledger nano wallet is a digital wallet that is secure and it's offline. So many of the complaints uh, and or fears for new investors that are in the crypto space is that, wow, well, if I leave my crypto in my wallet, can anybody actually go in and take it? You know, and many don't feel very secure. What this wallet will do is it would allow you to take whatever crypto, whether it's Ethereum, Bitcoin, Dogecoin, or whatever you have, you can secure it in this particular wallet and it's offline. So you're not susceptible to anybody getting into uh, your wallet or anything like that. I personally have never had anybody uh, take any of my crypto in any of the wallets that I recommended. And I had you all in mind when I gave those recommendations. So do me a favor. Number one, I want you to like the video if you've already watched it. I want you to subscribe to our channel and do me a favor, hit the bell. But listen, here's the other thing that we want to mention really, really quick. These, this, only cost about $99. They're very easy to find. You can find them on Amazon. You can find them on uh, Walmart. Uh, but I want to say to every new investor, I would recommend for those of you who have fear, just grab you one of these. It will serve you well. Yeah, I, you, you took my question away from me. My question was going to be, how much does that thing cost and where can you find it? So uh, that was good. Hey, Patrick, do you have any uh, questions? or a comment related to uh, Mr. Palm's uh, crypto? No, I think he did a really good 
job explaining the security features of um, that, that, that hard, that, that thumb drive. Um, and can you find it also in Best Buy and some of the other retailers or is it just exclu is it exclusive to those outlets that you've mentioned? No, not at all. Uh, I'm quite certain that the, the two that I mentioned are the cheapest prices that I found, uh, which is why I mentioned them. Uh, but do your due diligence. If you're able to find it uh, cheaper somewhere else, by all means, as long as you have it, uh, you'd be secure. Okay. And, and what were the brands again? Uh, the, 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 the two sources that I named was Amazon and uh, Walmart. I'm talking about the wallet itself. Do, oh, it's, there... it's the Ledger Nemo X. Ledger Nemo X. Yes, it's spelled N A N O X. Okay, got gotcha. it. They do have some other brands, so be sure that you get the Nano X. Okay. And does uh, does it does it have like a memory like a, like gigabytes or some specific? Yes. So type of storage. Yes. No, that's a very very good question. So those of you who want to be uh, you know that are very technical. Uh, you can just do a Google search and you can look up the features that accompany this specific digital wallet uh, and how much you'll be able to store. Um, and like I said, this one typically runs anywhere from about 104 to about 130. Uh, I was able to purchase this one off of Walmart for 105. So um, I would encourage each of you to grab you one of these and uh, that will serve you really well. Do, do you know how many gigabytes or megabytes is recommended for a digital wallet? Well, it depends on how much crypto you have, you know? So if you got quite a bit of crypto, then, uh, you know, obviously you, you want to have more storage, but this will, for every new investor, this will serve them well. Okay. Okay. All right. Sounds good. I know Mr. Palms, you have something else to share with us as well. Um, I know you wanted to share about uh, the DHF platform and how one can become a millionaire. So I'm excited to hear what you have to say about that. So would you like to share that with our audience? And Absolutely. I have a wonderful treat uh, I wanted to bring to you all this morning. Um uh, concerning DHF. We did a review and uh, on DHF a few segments ago. So again, for those of you who didn't see that, go back and take a look at our previous videos in which we talked about DHF. All right. So here's the secret that uh, I'm getting ready to bring to those of you. All right. Can y'all see my screen? I can see your screen very well. Yes. All right. For those of you who, uh, you know, I don't want to insult anybody's intelligence. I think everybody that's, uh, that's at least our audience and our listeners are, are very uh, informed. And uh, we just want to educate you just a little bit more. Uh, so all this is, is utilizing compounding formulas to become a millionaire in three to five years using the DHF platform. And those of you who haven't watched the previous video, again, I encourage you to go back. You will also find links in the description below uh, where you can actually sign up for this particular platform. It is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, and I am a part of it. But I want to just go through this really quick. Uh, and the single deposit at the top right here, it's showing for those of us, uh, you know, a three-year plan, we have a four-year plan, and then we have a five-year plan. Now, this three-year plan is based on an investment amount, uh, which some of us may not have at the time, is $17,500. We can see the four-year plan starting out at $4,800. Uh, we also have a five-year plan that starts out at $1,200. All of these particular entry points, um, you can utilize this particular strategy. On average, on average, DHF is uh, giving you a percentage of 12% a month. That's on average. I can tell you that uh, I've shown in previous videos 
that we've had as high as 16% in a month. I think last month uh, was 15.78%. Um, and I will update you uh, that information next week. I promise you, I'll show you what, uh, what my return was on the DHF platform. I want to say it was around 15.87%. I'll be able to show that to you. Prior to me getting out of here, I do want to show you that there's another strategy that you can use at the very bottom here. And it's an initial investment, but it's also 23 monthly deposits. Okay, that's a little bit different. So um, the single deposit, obviously you're just putting in 1,200 if you're doing the five year and you're just compounding and you're just watching that grow. You're not touching it, you're not having to do anything. DHS is just compounding your interest every single month. Then for those who are you know, really active in the space, perhaps you wanna go with maybe a uh, five-year plan where you put in 750 as your initial deposit, but over time and every month, you're contributing $75. That sounds very doable to a new investor. He or she may not be able to come in with 1200, but they can come in with 750 and you can apply the same strategy and you can still reach millionaire status. That's phenomenal. I hope this gave most of you all a uh, good taste. And I wanna give you some numbers as I leave because I'm, I'm, I'm a numbers guy. I wanna say this to those of you who are just looking at this broad spectrum, there's over 224 billion that trades on the New York Stock Exchange every single day. But what most people don't know is that there's over 7 trillion that trades in the crypto space every single day. Crypto is crazy. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I was just looking at one of my favorite YouTube episodes, and we'll go into that in in a uh, upcoming episode of our favorite YouTube shows for investing. But um, I saw Mark Cuban on one of my faves. Um, so, yeah, man, he was talking about the crypto space, and you know, when we post crypto related subject uh, material the response is elevated. It's really hot and it's where the money is. But go ahead if you would like to comment there, Palms. I know you probably have something to say about that or, or Patrick. Yeah, I want to say in closing that uh, as much as, um, you know, and I'm not looting or taking away from anything else that you do, uh, but I would encourage those of you who are in the crypto space. I mean, obviously we have two phenomenal, phenomenal people in this space that uh, that are, uh, you know, two decades uh, are better, uh, probably three decades combined, um, and Mr. Troy Johnson and, and Mr. Patrick. Uh, so I invest in that space as well, uh, but uh, I'm also in the crypto space. And this is what makes this, this platform so unique is that we have phenomenal, phenomenal people uh, that you can look into they give you a gauge on what the market's going to be doing on any given day, how to get your wallet set up, uh, whether you want to invest in penny stocks or whether you want to invest in, in, in stock and options. I mean, Troy is your guy. Patrick is your guy. And so I, I, I do want to have this one question because I think I didn't get a chance to ask this. And that is for those of us who are looking into the stock market, this is the new investor. I want to help them just for a moment. Uh, Patrick and Troy, you can chime in in this. Is, is there an indicator? I didn't hear this. Is there an indicator to show when the market is going to kind of recover and the opportunity that we're seeing over the last three and a half weeks is going to start sort of going away? Are, can we expect to see this for another three weeks or four weeks? What's the indicator that, uh, that you look at in order to see whether the market is uh, kind of recovering? Uh, well, Patrick, before you jump in, let me jump in. The market, as you know, is completely unpredictable. None of us really know, but we do have indicators that we use to help us uh, with our probability of a direction of the market. But no one really knows because the market is so unpredictable and crazy. And 
if anyone could 100% predict, then we all would be millionaires. And we all are not millionaires, but certainly some of us are millionaires. Okay. Thank you for that response, Troy. So let me, let me, because this is good. I like, I like your answer. I was going to go to my indicators, but go ahead. Okay. No, I'm going to, I'm going to let you get to that. Here's the, here's the thing that I want. Uh, so would your advice be to the new investors to keep investing while the market is still allowing the opportunities? Because there's some real nice opportunities out there right now. So what yeah, this, would your advice be? Oh, you know, and you're leading me <laughs> right where you know I want to go. And that is, this is the time to buy. <laughs> yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. The market is on sale. Um, and, and you will see all of the experienced people who have been in the market like I over two decades, they will consistently say the same thing. When the market falls, stocks are on sales for growth stocks. So you have to have those indicators to know what a growth stock is so that you're buying the best companies when the price is down. And so my indicators for those stocks would be, first, you look at the 200-day moving average to see the long-term trajectory. Secondly, you can look at the Bollinger Band to look at what deviation level you are, but the Bollinger Band would continue to go down in a bear market. Thirdly, you can look at the RSI to see oversold, overbought conditions. And then Patrick did a great job of describing a fourth indicator, which is the VIX, to see if that buying sentiment, that fear factor is elevated enough so that the market would do a turn. A turn. As long as the investors out there, retail and, and institutional, which means the big hedge funds and, and, and mutual funds and big corporate types, as long as they are not fearful, the market will continue to go down in a downward turn. So it, you really have to have that fear factor where everyone runs and then you be the contrarian and uh, get in and the market goes back up. So this is the time to buy. Uh, that was long winded, but that if you listen to any experienced investor and especially someone who has built his wealth like I have in the market, then they will consistently say what I just said. Hey, Patrick, would you like to add on to that before we go to the next segment? Yeah, so it's about the charm on it. Um... So the CBOE VIX is can be used as a contrarian indicator. So when you see super high VIX spikes, that's gonna in, that's gonna mean that there's a lot of fear. Everybody's selling, um, particularly the retail investor, maybe some institutions. That's when you again want to start, you know, buying heavy. But in essence, you should buy a little bit more as it comes down, buy a little bit more as it continues to come down. And what you may want to do is buy the quality names or buy quality ETFs first, such as the S&P 500, SBY. You might want to buy your Microsofts, your Amazons, your Apples, NVIDIA. QQQ. QQQ. <laughs> and... Um, and some of the various indi other ETFs and market uh, and stocks that have consistently performed over decades. Yes, yes. So great question. Kind of led us in a direction where we need to go now because my profit and loss update is not good based on the last three weeks. So let's go into Troy's profit and loss update. And I want to share with you guys the latest on my uh, account based on where we are with the market being what it is. So let me see if I can pull that. Oh, my account is not up. Let's see. Are you guys seeing this? Yes. I am. I am. Okay. So here's my uh, trading plan to give an update 
on my profit and loss for 2021. I have been over this quite a bit. So essentially I started out with 25 K with the goal to triple it before we had such a crazy downturn market. It feels like a black swan market, um, but it's not, but it feels like one. But I uh, started out with 25 K I'm using the Bollinger Band entry and exit points, a, a, a combination of long and short contracts, call options to improve this account. So uh, let's go and look at the updates. These are previous weeks where I had uh, trades. I want to go specifically to last week update. Last week, my account had gone down to 16K and a minus $8,000 profit. And, and that's expected when, you, when you're using high leverage call options, short date it. So, um, and I was expecting the market to go up. And Patrick, I probably should have paid more attention to the VIX to see that the fear wasn't out there enough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the market will continue to go down until everyone's fearful and running. And so, um, but I did not do any additional trades this past week. But so I did no additional trades. And my account fell by additional $3,000. So my account is down 11745 almost, almost half. But again, the market is down. When the market turns, I'm expecting that accelerated growth back up. But I wanted to be really transparent um, with the audience so that they know that this is a real account. This is $25,000 of my real money. And, um, and you can see how calm I am because I have the amount of money. I'm, it's not going to hurt me if I were to, you know, draw down uh, to that degree because of my overall uh, real account, the size of it. So I was willing to put up 25 K, um, for those reasons, but I mean, I am expecting it to come back. It's been a really crazy month uh, as far as the last three weeks, I should say. So back and let me pull up. Let me go back to sharing. And yeah, so let me go back here and share. All right. So I'm back sharing. Mm -hmm. Can you guys see? My account now? I yes. can see your account. Yes. Okay, perfect. And so I'm going to blow it up some so you can see the monumental losses here uh, in the account. So, and um, it's really big losses right now. I did some very aggressive trading, um, you know, uh, not expecting the drawdown that we, we had over the last three weeks, short data options. So you can see that, you know, I mean, just large percentage drawdowns and the market, if you look at previous episodes three or so weeks ago, four weeks ago, I mean, these were all green and in hindsight could have done some rolling the account, but right now I'm down and, but I do have some room here. I mean, these are January 22, June, June, May. This short dated one is probably going to be a wash. That's probably going to get a mainly, um, it's probably pretty much gone unless I roll it. The April Costco, I may roll it, extend the trade so that we can turn that around over time. This should turn. And then AMD should turn eventually. So I'm going to, you're going to see me rolling a couple of these trades to stay in them and then you'll see them turn around. So, you don't see me nervous. I'm good. 25K for me. It is a lot of money, but, you know, I, I, I'm i good. And I'll turn this around. I may, because of the position we're in, I may have to add a little capital to this so that I can roll a couple of these short dated contracts out a little further so that when the market turns, I can get accelerated growth back. So that's kind of my trading plan for and profit and loss update for the week. Uh, the market is bloody. It's part of the game. When you uh, do bets like this, 
meaning placing a trades, placing trades. You have to be prepared for the ups and the down. But I will say, over time, you're going to have a lot more ups. And, and you know, if, if that wasn't the case, financially, I wouldn't be in the position I'm in today. So that's my take. Any questions, guys, before we go over to Patrick's profit and loss update? Yeah, I do have a question, uh, you know, and for the new investor again, you know, you're poised for reasons, uh, Troy. Can, can, you, can you just tap on that just for a minute? Um, wh where does that conviction come from? Uh, you know, to, 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 the blood is in the streets, your portfolio is down. Uh, you're not panicking. I mean, you're just as calm as when we just started. Can you talk to our audience a little bit about, you know, did you do this over two decades? I mean, how did you get to this place? Well, the reason why I'm so calm is a couple of reasons. One is, if you've been in the market as long as I have, these drawdown events happen two or three times a year. So, it's just expected as part of the game. The market goes up like this. And so it's just part of the game. So, you know, if, if you're a new investor, it would freak you out. If you are an experienced investor, you say it's part of the game. It's time to buy. Yes. <laughs> and so that's number one. Number two is the amount of money I invested. But if you look at my real account, I, you know, it's down like big, six figures big. And that's normal in a drawdown. And then it's going to be up six figures big, but even more on the upside. So it's just, it's just a normal game. Um, it's normal. And lastly, I didn't put up more than I'm willing to lose, to be honest. And so I'm, I'm, I could lose 25 K it's a lot of money. I'm not expecting to lose it. And especially not on YouTube, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it is what it is. So you got to put up what you're willing to learn with and what you're willing that, that you could lose. And it, it, you, you don't want to lose, but you know, so that's kind of why I'm so calm and feel the way I feel. Yeah. Well, in summary, uh, would you say uh, to our audience that that part of part of your success has been, uh, you know, the, the success of, of what you've been able to do over two decades had to do with with uh, you actually doubling down in turbulent times? Yeah, absolutely. And we have talked off camera about, you know, this is the time to buy uh, stocks are on sale. So this is when. I traditionally would buy. And, you know, with my YouTube account, I cannot buy right now because the limited size and I was so aggressive on the front end. But on my real account, I've been buying for the last couple of weeks. And just like Patrick said, on the way down, you do not put all at once. You just do a 25%, just nibble on the way down. Do not be greedy. If you have 10K to put in, you put in three, we wait, you put in another three. And then if the market takes off, you may not get all of your money in, but we know what Warren Buffett rule is. Rule number one, don't lose money. Rule number two, see rule number one. So you can't be greedy. The game is about not losing money. And so on this account, I was actually greedy. I was really confident, um, you know, because of what has happened over the last, you know, six months, but it's a different market. But I do have defensive strategies and additional capital where I can put in and I, I feel confident I can recover. And so that's where we are. So you have to have that, those toolboxes so that you have, you, you know what to do when you're in this situation too, as well. But Patrick, would you like to add to that? Yeah, certainly. Um, I know that I've been a little bit aggressive here, and I'll show you that in my trading plan. However, um, yeah, just as you said, just buy little bits and pieces. Um, Jim Cramer says, 
on one of his shows. Um, he says, do not buy everything at once. Do not buy all at once. Words to live by. So uh, because we're running out of time, let's do Patrick's profit and loss update. And then I want to make an announcement when we wrap up the show. So Patrick, would you like to do your profit and loss update? Certainly. Okay, so right now... Um, Can you blow that up a bit, Patrick? Yeah, I could blow it up some. Is that better? Yeah, that's better. Okay. So, again, my trading plan is to... Um, I, it was initially to invest a uh, thousand dollars and I put an extra forty nine thousand dollars. I use a series of Bollinger Bands, RSI, stochastics, and other momentum indicators, as well as price patterns such as head and shoulders, bear pennants to use entry and exits. I um, my goal is to take my account from around $50,000 or so. And by the end of 2022, having about 150, 200 K. Um, what a week it's been. Um, I sold a series. I bought a series of uh, puts and a series of, and sold a series of puts. Did um, you buy puts or sell puts? Sorry, sell puts. That's what I meant. You didn't. Then, you did not buy any puts. I didn't buy any puts. Okay, yeah. go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I'm, no, I'm mistaken. I, and thank you for correcting me on that one. Hey, Patrick, can you take that um, menu off of the screen? Just click in the background so we can. Yeah, just click there. Is that mean you're just not? All right, go ahead. Okay. All right. Is that better? Yep. Go ahead. Okay. Sorry for interrupting you. You All were right, saying well, you were selling puts, but go ahead. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, so I was selling puts, and then on one put, I um, had to buy it back because I fear I felt that the um, the the market had gone on this one ARKK. Oh, uh, ARKK ETF. went crazy bad. Went crazy Not bad, <laughs> and it went went below my strike price. Yeah, so I wanted to get out of that trade. And because it's, it's a particularly volatile ETF, um, I closed that option with a $1,000 loss on that account. I sold an SMH put at 235 strike price. And then I actually got assigned those shares at 235 And that's where the market's at 230 so oh good good deal <laughs> <laughs> you could you, so, could do a, you could do a covered call and make some money on that fairly shortly when the money when the market recovers and we could talk well, about that on a future episode yeah right? that's that's part of that will strategy as i discussed it in, in a previous episode yeah so anyways um for the, over the last two weeks or so my account value has dropped by about two thousand two hundred seventy two dollars but it was up as high as maybe 56,000 and change right now. It's around 53,000 and change. Gotcha. So coming up on the next trading week, I'm going to be watching the market volatility. And as I was discussing previously, watch the VIX. The saying is the trend is your friend, but I like to say the VIX is the fix. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Could you, you know, repeat that saying? That was some game there. Could you repeat <laughs> that? The Vits is. All right. Everybody knows, you know, don't fight the market trend because the market trend is your friend. But I say the market trend is your friend, but to understand which way the trend may turn and go in one direction, the CBOE VIX is the fix. Gotcha. All right. And that's a good way to, um, you know, to gauge, you know, when you should be buying, when you should be selling. And gotcha. then just follow the trend of the VIX in reference to the market. I am keen on, I have a keen interest in some of the Apple shares because Apple's been trading um, relatively stable. Right now it's about 
Let's see. You know, still at around 121. And I think a couple, like last week, it was around 127. So it's pretty much bottomed up. It bottoming out, so you I know, think that could be a good entry. In my That's real, good. in my real account, Patrick, I I sold a one fifteen put. Okay, and, and I cannot. I think I collected maybe three grand. Might might I might have collected five grand. I I would have to look, but I sold a one fifteen put. Um, and I think it was out to May, but I, you know, if, if Apple falls below $115 and I think I bought three or four contracts, I cannot remember. I, I, let's just say I sold a 115 put Apple, uh, around the May ish time frame, May, June, if I can get Apple at that price with the trajectory, how it's traditionally performed with the 200 day moving average. I'll be thrilled to buy it at that price and collect the premium, which gave me an effective price of around $109 a share. But we'll, we could talk about those type of things in future episodes. Those are the income strategies that once you get your, in, your, your, your account up to the 500,000, a million, 1.5 million, you can really do income related strategies where you could bring in you know, five, 10 grand a month selling puts. And that's what Warren Buffett does. So, mm -hmm. um, but just to piggyback on what you were saying, those are just great strategies, but we're, we're running out of time. We have to wrap up the show. I think I got a little verbose, a little loquacious when it came to Mr. Palms asking me about you know, why I'm so relaxed in the down market. I think that was really important. And I went a little longer than I expected. So um, I do want to make an announcement that next Sunday on the Bad Out of Debt show, we are planning to have a celebrity guest on the show. Um, so our guest is going to be Mr. John Marshall Jones. He's a uh, celebrity actor that's been in a number of TV series and, and TV commercials. I actually saw him on the Super Bowl commercial. Um, and he's been on a number of shows and number of movies like uh, White Man Can't, it was White Man Can't Jump back in the day. And uh, he's on Bounce TV uh, on a sitcom now. He can talk about all of that, but he will be sharing some of his investment strategies and he is a big crypto uh, believer, crypto guy. So, Mr. Palms, I certainly need you to be available next week to meet Mr. John Marshall Jones on our Celebrity Sunday um, taping that we will do. So I just wanted to make that announcement. And guys, thank you for contributing the content that you contribute to the show. And we'll wrap it up for now. We call this show Bet Out of Debt because when you make a trade, buy security, it's called placing a bet. But hopefully it's a winner one that would keep you out of debt. And if you like the content, give us a thumbs up, a like. If you want to get more of this type of content, subscribe, hit the bell. We, we would appreciate your feedback and comment. And as always, keep investing. And that's it.